my very excellent mother just served us nine no, nine what 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 did my very excellent mother serve us well we'll never know guys because pluto's not a planet anymore poor pluto the icy distant celestial body that we are still arguing about over a decade since it's the motion we've got planets on our plate today on fact bites Before we launch off into space, remember to hit that subscribe button so you stay informed whenever we release new episodes. And if you like today's video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. For a long time, Pluto was the smallest, coldest, most distant planet from our sun. Pluto is smaller than Earth's moon, and temperatures can range from between negative 360 to negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit. At its farthest distance from Earth, it's more than 4.6 billion miles away, and over 2.6 billion miles away at its nearest distance. Remember, planets in our solar system travel in elliptical orbits. But is Pluto a planet? Science says no, and yes. All right, let's go back in time. Okay, not go back in time, and for reasons why, check out this video here, but let's look through a window into the past. Pluto made its first appearance to humans back in 1905. American astronomer Percival Lowell noticed deviations in the orbits of both Neptune and Uranus, and he theorized this was due to the gravitational pull of another unknown planet. Although he predicted the location of Pluto, Lowell died before he could find it. Pluto was officially discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory, and he classified it as the ninth planet from the sun. Pluto remained a distant planet for decades, out in space, far, far away. Then, in the 1990s, with help from the Hubble telescope, astronomers discovered that Pluto sat in a band of other icy bodies, not in empty space. This band came to be known as the Kuiper Belt, Several of these bodies were similar in size to Pluto, leading astronomers to question Pluto's planetary status. In 2000, none other than Neil deGrasse Tyson made headlines when he left Pluto out of an exhibit at the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The exhibit was supposed to compare the relative sizes of the planets, and Pluto's exclusion led many to send Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson angry letters. Then, in 2005, a research team at Palomar Observatory, led by Mike Brown, discovered Eris, an object also past Neptune that astronomers initially believed to be bigger than Pluto. This pushed many astronomers to call for a redefinition of what a planet actually is. In 2006, the final nail in Pluto's coffin was hammered into place when astronomers voted on a formal definition for planets at the International Astronomical Union in Prague. This definition had three criteria. Number one, it had to orbit a star, like our sun. Number two, it must have sufficient mass for its gravity to achieve hydrostatic equilibrium. This means that the object needs to be large enough that its gravity overcomes the natural form and shape of the object's materials, forming it into a sphere. Basically round. It has to be round. And number three, it has to be able to clear the neighborhood around its orbit. This means that the surrounding space can't have too many asteroids, comets, or icy bodies, like the Kuiper Belt. So, this definition officially excluded Pluto, which was reclassified as a dwarf planet along with Eris. It also resulted in the infamous Brown earning the nickname, the man who killed Pluto. So the dwarf designation took the number of known planets officially back to eight, and the case was closed, right? Not exactly. Almost as soon as this definition was made official, it was met with an outcry from Pluto supporters. School kids, space enthusiasts, and academics all weighed in, most notably NASA's leader of the New Horizons mission to Pluto, Alan Stern. Stern's argument centers on the third criteria for planethood, the one that officially disqualifies Pluto. According to him, no planet in our solar system has a completely clear orbital field, and this criteria is actually contingent on how close to the sun a planet is. 
The further from the sun that you are, the larger your orbital zone is and the slower your orbital speeds, making it harder for objects that far out to clear their orbital zones. Therefore, in order to be a planet, an object would have to compensate by having more mass. For example, Earth's orbital zone is relatively clear, but if Earth was located as far out as Pluto, its mass would still be too small to clear its orbital zone. In contrast, if Pluto was closer to the Sun, it would have an easier time clearing its orbital zone. Stern's argument was probably spurred in part by the fact that NASA's New Horizons mission to explore Pluto had launched in January of 2006, and the resolution on planethood was voted on in August of that same year. Despite being the fastest spacecraft launched from Earth at the time, clocking in at a whopping 36,400 miles per hour, New Horizons didn't reach Pluto until July of 2015. Yes, it took nine years to get there. The debate around Pluto's status was sparked again when the first high-resolution photos were literally downloaded from the craft the same day it reached Pluto. New Horizons took measurements of the dwarf planet, which confirmed that it's about one-fifth the diameter of Earth and about a third smaller than our moon. NASA was able to capture close-up pictures of Pluto, giving us our first real glimpse of the dwarf planet. Observations of Pluto's surface by the New Horizons spacecraft revealed a variety of surface features, including mountains that reach as high as 11,000 feet, comparable to the Rocky Mountains on Earth. While methane and nitrogen ice cover most of the surface of Pluto, these materials are not strong enough to support such enormous peaks, so scientists suspect that the mountains are formed on a bedrock of water ice. The debate over Pluto's status is still ongoing, with participants from both sides believing that the astronomy community will come to a consensus sooner or later. In the meantime, school kids everywhere are stuck memorizing the names of planets with phrases like, my very excellent mother just served us noodles. Noodles? Noodles? Are they handmade? Because otherwise, how excellent is she, really? There used to be pizza. Or how about my very elderly mother just sat on Uncle Ned? Or the baffling mustard volcanoes erupt meaty juicy sandwiches up north? What? One more parting fun fact. The name for Pluto was selected by an 11-year-old girl from Oxford, England. Pluto is also the name for the Roman god of the underworld. The suggestion for the name was sent to the Lowell Observatory by way of the girl's grandfather, along with more than a thousand other proposals from around the world. It was unanimously selected by the observatory staff on March 24, 1930. So where do you stand on the Pluto debate? Is Pluto the smallest planet or the king of the Kuiper Belt? Or is it both? And what's your favorite mnemonic device for remembering the now eight planets in our solar system? Leave us a comment below and be sure to like this video and hit subscribe for more cosmic fact bites in your orbit. Thanks for watching.